Good morning, everybody. Happy New Week. Hope you're doing amazing. Um, right next to me, you've got maybe you can recognize this person, Julie Fisher, who um, of late you guys might know is my publications assistant, but also more importantly today, I'm interviewing her. It's her turn finally uh, to get an interview. Here are Julie's two books, um, The Unexpected Journey and The Magic of Inclusion is her second book. Um, and apparently she told me a little secret that she's writing a third book and we're gonna find that out. So thank you so much, Jules, for joining me this morning. Um, and uh, let's get into this discussion about, you know, um, uh, all the things that you're passionate about. But before I do, <laughs> uh, let's give, uh, give a proper introduction about a little bit of your background story. So you and I met and you had a dream to write a book back in 2018. Uh, when we met and your dream began to unfold into that reality. So um, Julie guys completed her first book, The Unexpected Journey in September 2019. Um, it, even though she didn't expect that her whole life began to change. She began to be asked to, uh, to speak about her journey and what she's passionate about and found herself becoming a voice for her son and others living with disability. In 2020, she published the second book, The Magic of Inclusion, and is enjoying working with groups such as Carers Victoria and Australia, Down Syndrome Victoria and Australia, and many other groups she will be working with in the future. And her life has definitely changed since the day she met myself and Stuart, and she's enjoying uh, where her books are taking her. She's currently working on book three, as I said, and a business uh, to raise awareness and help families. So today, Jules, we're talking about your, your catchphrase, I think you're famous for saying this, give people a chance and watch them shine, the power of inclusion and acceptance. So do you want to tell these guys a little bit about maybe your story and um, where this passion to, that's gotten you to where you are today has come about? Yes, I will. Thanks for having me this morning, Nat. Um, it's lovely to chat about the books. <clears throat> um, yeah, and as Nat said, we met in 2018 and um, I was so nervous realising, you know, the first step to realising a dream of writing a book that I'd had since high school. So um, doing the first book uh, was amazing. The retreat was fantastic. I set myself goals and I met each of them. I had to write everything down to make sure I ticked them all off. And, um, yeah, and then The Unexpected Journey was born in September of 2019 and that's just about our journey it was just a memoir it was just about our journey with Darcy who lives with Down syndrome and um, I had no expectations after the book was released I just thought I'd kick off a bucket list item and that would be it and I'd be happy but my whole life changed um, I found myself being approached by people to speak about my book and uh, the feedback I was getting was amazing that you know people were saying thank you for letting us have a look into your life and see what it's like um, you know everybody's journey is different but just to get a bit of an idea what it's like to live with a young man with down syndrome they um, all were really enjoying it so all of a sudden I found myself connecting with different groups and speaking and of course the passion to keep writing was still there mm. so when COVID hit um, I started working on the second book and uh, yeah, that came out last year and that's about inclusion and acceptance and what it looks like. It's so broad. There's so many different aspects of it, but just from my point. Yeah, I love that. So what is acceptance and inclusion? What do you see it from your perspective? Um, from my perspective, simply, I would just like to see everybody be able to go about and live their life like everyone else without having to worry about stares and points and remarks and a lot of people say to me oh my goodness does that still happen and I said yes it does and as much as I try and ignore it I can push past it now 15 years later but mm -hmm. I can't ignore it and I still see it and I, I don't want it to happen like sometimes people don't realize that they're staring and making me feel uncomfortable so just be aware of what you're doing and maybe just smile and wave it makes a big difference to someone's day, even just going for a walk or going to the shops. Yeah. Um, and I, I would really like to see everybody be given a chance. Sometimes people need to be shown some extra steps yeah. um, to achieve something and that's okay because once they achieve it, um, yeah, it's amazing to watch. Like when Darcy's shown some steps, Sometimes it takes a little while, but when he finally gets it, he's so happy and just it just shines. It, you know, everybody yeah. shines in that moment. So it's wonderful. Yeah, I remember reading in your first book, you know, how you explained 
um, it takes him a little bit longer to master a particular skill and all that kind of stuff, but it's still amazing when it happens and you keep persisting. And that's something that I've seen you do. I've known you now for three and a half years, I think. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we often say, you know, Darcy's uh, the most entertained child. You know, you do so much with him. You give him so many different opportunities. Um, you know, how do you do that? Because, you know, a lot of families, you've said they might be uncomfortable because of the fact of other people staring and things like that. So what's the mindset that you, uh, you've had to develop in order to, you know, be, be able to do everything that you're doing? I just have to focus on him and what's best for him, I think, and allow him the chance to do the things he wants to do. You know, at 15, he expresses what he likes and what he doesn't like now. Yeah. And um, when he was little, it was like his brothers, you know, we would try something and if he liked it, we'd keep going with it. And if not, we didn't. And when he was born, I was actually running our local Auskick clinic. So he was thrust in front of a lot of people straight away. So, you know, that probably made it a little easier for us. Um, and he was going to his brother's basketball games and their football games. And he developed a real love for those sports as well. So you know, it was inevitable that he was going to at least have a try at them. Um, and I just focus on him and what's what's important for him. Yeah, that's amazing. And um, what do you think people's reservations are when, uh, uh, if they have a child with disability, like, you know, because you really want to help other families, right? Um, you know, kind of move past those reservations. What do you think holds them back the most? Um I think sometimes it's it's other people's judgment that that worries them. Um, I think with people that I've spoken to um, and friends that I've had experiences with, I think they worry about the time that it might take for them to learn something. Mm. Um, these days, it's a little easier with support workers because sometimes you can sort of work with the support workers, and sometimes our kids will do something for someone else before they'll do it for us. Yeah, um, no. I think all kids are like that. All right? kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think they just really worry about what other people's perceptions are, you know, like so sometimes disability can be scary to some people, especially if they haven't had it in their lives. Yeah. And it doesn't need to be. I think we've all just got to remember that everyone is a person and everyone has a has a want to, to do something. I mean, even if they're just part of a group. And just yep. being in that atmosphere, that's important too, you know, just to be part of celebrations or part of fun, you know. So what would be your one piece of advice you would give them, you know, if they, they it sounds like the focus is a lot on what will other people say or think and judgment and all that sort of stuff. What is it that they need to kind of tell themselves or what, what piece of advice would you give them? I think they've got to tell themselves that not everybody is being um, judgmental or negative even though it feels like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think sometimes people are just looking at somebody and they're fascinated to see what they curious. look like and what they're doing, curious. Darcy does it too. Mm -hmm. um, there's certain people that he will fixate yeah. on and I say to him, just go up and say hello, you know, don't don't stare. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's not nice. so, yeah. yeah, so just sort of try and push past it, maybe smile at the person that's staring. Um, that That helps me. Um, and if you can't do that, just concentrate on your loved one and um, just push past it and concentrate on them and what, what you're doing with them. Does it become easier the longer you um, have this in your life? You know, you've had Darcy now 15 years. Yes. Is it a bit easier now than it was in the early days? Um, yes, it is. It is easier, but some days it's still hard. Just it just depends on the situation. Um, you know, sometimes people will point as well, and they'll make a remark. That's hard. That's hard to get past. I don't want him to hear that either. Those remarks. So I try and sort of shield him from that. Mm. Um, but yeah, it does get easier because you you stop concentrating on it. I think when you, for me, probably when I first started taking Darcy out and about, I was watching other people as well. Mm. Um, so that I noticed it more, whereas now I don't really do that. Focus on them now. No. I remember when I had my first baby and I went out of the house for the first few times, I was self-conscious, you know, just like if he's going to cry or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so you talk about embracing individuality and diversity. So how can we do more of that? Um, I think we just have to accept 
who who we are, who everyone else is, and just because um, everybody's a person, everybody belongs to a family, everyone has yeah. friends, um, and we all just want to live our best lives, don't we? We all just want to have a have a go. So just remember that that we're all people first and embrace that. You know, Darcy's got lots of lots of wonderful things that he brings to the table and teaches people all the time as does his friends and I think we all can do that. I love that. I think um, uh, people with disability can teach us a lot yeah. of the amount of resilience they have within them to keep going. Um, I grew up with a disabled auntie uh, with polio who actually raised me and while my mum was here in Australia for two and a half years and um, that, that the staring and all that kind of stuff is very, um, if you like tenfold what it is here in Australia back in Macedonia, because those kind of people really still get hidden away in their homes and, um, yeah, not even, they don't see the light of day, Jules. Like it's, it, that's why I, I love how progressive things are here, yet we can do better, right? Yeah. Even more, more so because there's yet another level that you can go, what else can we do? How can we make it even easier and um, and better? So um, focusing on abilities and celebrating successes, that's something that I see you do all the time. Um, how do you find um, the way to give him all, the, how do you give him all these opportunities? Like, because maybe people don't know what's available to them and things like that. When it comes to Darcy and I, I've seen you like take him to all sorts of places and, you know, and our kids watch the Facebook posts and they go, geez, what's Darcy doing today? <laughs> I think I think with Darcy, because he's the third child too, he's got two older brothers. So right from an early age, he was coming to the movies. Um, we were going to theatre performances and he yes. was he was around sport and things like that. And he showed a, a love for it and he enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, so I just kept taking him and... If we were trying something new, like maybe, I don't know, maybe say Luna Park or something like that, we would give him a go, see if he wanted to go on something. And if he didn't, um, we wouldn't worry. And maybe the next time he'll have a, have a go. So that's the other thing too, you know, never give up. He, they might not want to do something straight away. Um, they might be a bit nervous, like we all are when we try something new. Um, but give it a go another time. Just keep trying because they're growing just like all kids do. And I think it's a, a common across all kids. I remember my middle child who was super scared of doing any adventures and things like that. I think it's sometimes even age specific that they're not ready for certain things yeah. at a certain time. Yeah, I love that. Uh, I'll, if you've got a couple of comments, I'm going to read them. Um, CC says, um, such good points from Susie. Uh, Luba's watching. Hey, Luba and Andrew chipping. Okay, Sierra, we are um, not open to different. Why did we feel the need to call it special needs uh, just because it's different? It shows the world uh, we can learn a lot from them. Great interview from Kim. <laughs> so, I love it. So the book one was about your story, like, and I, it, it was like literally Jassy's life from zero to uh, to. 14 I think because yeah, yeah. 14 when you finished book one book two is the magic of inclusion yeah. what does that book mostly focus on um you know rather than the story there was the story and now tell us a little bit about um, yeah look it's still a bit of our story um yeah. I, I do some of the examples I talk about in the story are obviously examples from what we've experienced yes um, both good and negative yeah um, but basically it's just be kind um, in, in, if you find yourself staring at somebody and it's becoming awkward or whatever, just give a smile or wave. Mm -hmm. That's what I try and do most of the time now. I just sort of give people a smile if they're looking at Darcy. Um, but pretty much that's it. Just, just be kind and be open and remember that he's a person. He has the same feelings as everybody else. Somebody actually told me that we don't all have the same feelings, but I think at the end of the day, we do. We all want to be um, loved and have friends and belong. experience life and belong. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. So pretty much that's that's the main message out there. Um, but I talk about accessibility and language. Like a lot of people will talk to me instead of Darcy. So, you know, even though he might not be able to answer a question um, straight away, I would still prefer people now, especially that he's 15, to talk to him. You yeah. Know, How are you going at school or instead of me how is he going at school and you know does he like this does he like that so talk to Darcy ask Darcy if he likes it 
Mm. Um, because also too the more conversation he receives the better he's going to be at communicating back as well so I talk about things like that Um, and then at the end I've got some questions from other mums about what they feel about inclusion as well so oh that's really awesome Jules and um I love that you know um and I know you've worked out so many clever ways of being able to support him and all that and I guess that's all the shortcuts that you give families and I know you're um uh other book uh is included in the care packs for families who have a child with down syndrome is that right that's right yes yes Yes. the unexpected journey is included in the care packages that celebrate t21 gift to new families so yeah i'm really proud of that and it's an they're an amazing group you know they're spreading awareness as well and um, everything they do is relied on donations and purchases from their store. So they, they actually give these beautiful packages to, to families and the okay. feedback on that on that is really lovely. Mm, I love that. And, um, I, you know, so what's book number three going to be about? <laughs> what is it going to be? So book number three, I think, is just going to, I'm thinking of a collection of stories from other families yes. around the world. So I've, I've made connections around the world yes. now. So because it's very different in the UK um, mm-hmm. with their medical side and everything like that. So it's going to be sort of, sort of probably a bit like both books put together. So it will be their story as well um, and then their views on inclusion and acceptance and what they would like to see. Yeah, beautiful. So it kind of really ties together the trilogy of, yeah. um, of what, you know, you've told your story and now we can see a worldwide perspective of how people deal with it in other countries because uh, as I said the support I mean even just if you compare you know what I've experienced growing up in Macedonia with people with disability because I've been surrounded my auntie was part of groups and you know like people they hung out together and it's yeah it's like it was a whole other world not like we we find that people are a little bit more assimilated um yeah so awesome so tell me then about book writing how do you manage the process obviously they um you know you did the uh, first book through the face-to-face retreat in may 2019 or 18 19 19 yes yeah that was a lot longer ago i don't know why we met 2018 oh yes we did because you had it like a nine month lead up to your retreat from the time we met um so what um how did you find writing the first book and then compare it to the second book I'm very curious okay so uh the first book I followed your system step by step um I set myself goals so I wanted to have all of the audio done by the end of that weekend and I did that and I wanted to do it that way because I was worried that when I came home from retreat, I wouldn't keep pushing myself. So uh-huh. when I got home from retreat, you know, I rested. It was a big weekend. I uh, went to work the next day. And when I got home from work, I checked my emails and my um, 12 chapters were there on my emails. And that just really excited me. And even though it was a lot of work cleaning them up and they were a bit messy, yeah. it was there. Like the basic content was there. My book was there, ready to go. So I really enjoyed that. Um, <clears throat> It was hard sort of working through some of it, but um, I pushed myself. I kept setting my goals and writing notes and ticking them off, and that, that's how I did it. And then, yeah, just followed your steps. Um, I was watching your lives yeah. whenever I could and um, following the steps. And, yeah, just each process was just so exciting and amazing. And once I got the first edits back, once I just started, I, I just didn't want to stop. I wanted to keep going, and I wanted that book in my hand and, yeah, I need to get it out there. So yeah. And with the second book, did you speak or type this one? I actually typed it. So I typed, started working on it when COVID first hit, and um, one day I, I just had an idea. So I thought I might just quickly type those ideas out, um, and I started typing it, and then the book just just kept typing. Yeah. <laughs> and every time I sort of thought of something else, I would just start typing, and then all of a sudden I had a book there. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not as overwhelming once you've been through it the first time to understand what you're in for yeah. uh, and that, you know, little chunks, consistent steps and actions towards it, it'll make it happen at the end of the day. It's more like not like do all or nothing. It's about just setting and that's what I've heard you and that's what I see you do all the time is like you break things down and then you go ahead. Go ahead. I don't know if you have it near you, but do you have that folder? 
The oh, yes, I'll just, <laughs> I can get it. <laughs> I can get it. I'll tell you guys what Jules, um, with, from the day we met, she created this um, memory folder, I'll call it, and it was something to uh, guide and inspire her and remind her of the whole journey. Um, do you want to show us, like, put, put it up on screen? Yes. But the like, first, the first she, page was my mock-up cover. Yeah, so to, to see it and inspire you. So if any of you guys are writing a book, uh, the minute you get your mock-up cover, print it, then put it everywhere. There you go. She won the best tagline and most pre-sales at her retreat. So those were her Oscar-winning awards. And um, the photo, was that the photo from the uh, half-day seminar? Yes. yes yeah, yes. very first day we met, 7th yes. of August, 2018. There you go. <laughs> and um, and then the following page, that was the, the yay photo at retreat when we finished some photos that you took a big collage of throughout the retreat and the party night and all that kind of stuff. I yeah, love yeah. that. I love that. And then the full cover and your branding. Yeah. Um, we can see there your speaker bio. So it's like your whole journey of, of yeah. what you've gone and first book in hand there. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I love it. And then it. you holding it. Me holding it on an Instagram post. I love it. Yeah. It's and I just I kept that next to me all the time. You know, every time I sort of the self sabotage crept in, I just kept reminding myself how much fun I was having and why I was doing it. And yeah, that sort of really helped me to keep going as well at the time. And it's a wonderful thing to look back on as well. Of like, oh, this is where I started, and this is how kind of everything unfolded, and how far you have come. Because I often say to people. You know, you hang around me a little bit too long and, uh, you know, those business ideas start to, you know, rub off on you and you're starting to put on like, you know, maybe what I've got, my story has value for other people and organisations that I can bring and share this message on a wider scale. So tell me now about your future goals. Like, where, where, you know, you've got a business that you've, you've, you've even got a beautiful website. I'm going to share, I'll share it on the screen in a moment. But what do you want to see yourself doing in the next three to five years? Um, I would really love to just work with families and help them with goal setting um, and strategies with their kids. Um, yeah. um, and I also want to work with schools and businesses and just talk about um, person first language, accessibility, and then just help them around any questions or barriers they may be facing. So yeah, that's, that's what I would really like to do. And I want to keep um, speaking publicly. I really enjoy that and, and just keep sharing our story and showing showing the world our, our little man, our little big yeah. man now. <laughs> and, um, yeah, just sort of sharing our story because I, I see people getting a lot of value out of just even listening to totally. what we've done and where we're going. And, yeah. Well, so inspire, you lead the way and other people feel it's okay for them to take those steps as well. I think you, it's almost like you, by speaking out, give others permission that it's okay. You guys can get out there and you can do this. And, you know, and I love the fact that you share it because then that's how people are able to see. Otherwise, if we don't share, if we stay the best kept secret, we're not going to be able to inspire others to go, well, if she can do it, I can. Or if their family can do this kind of stuff, mm -hmm. ours could as well. So it, it is important. It is, yeah. really? and, the, and the more of us that are out there sharing our stories and helping um, others, the better it's going to get. So, And also it makes people feel like they're not alone, right? Because some people might go, I'm the only one having these problems or these challenges around this situation. Even uh, why did I start parent groups when you have a right. when you're a first time parent? <laughs> because you think you're the only one that's not sleeping or having trouble breastfeeding, <laughs> but right. it's actually everyone is having the very similar challenges so yeah it's creation it's the creation of that yes. which is not as commonly known right that's right yeah, yeah. so we all, we all reach out to like-minded people when we you know with our with all our kids you know first and month, you've been part months. of many worldwide communities haven't you over the years um, well, I'm part of um, one in the UK at the moment um, Darcy is Darcy's yes. an ambassador so um, yeah, but I mean, with with the technology that we know now, since COVID has hit, it, there's more opportunity to link up with other people around yeah. the world, which is great. Yeah, because mm. I thought you guys knew some people in the US and oh yeah, we do. We've connected with a love 
lovely lady, Bonnie, in the US who was caring for uh, an elderly gentleman that lived with Down syndrome. But um, unfortunately, he passed away last year. So yeah, but we still kept in contact. And it's interesting to hear their systems as well. The stuff mm -hmm. that she does or she did with him, she helps a lot of people around the medical side, like making sure they get what what they they should be getting. And, yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that too. Well, it's good to compare notes, right? Maybe yeah. some some countries doing are doing some things really great and not others. And then yeah, what we do, and then and then you hopefully come up with a overall strategy that's actually great for everyone. Yeah. I love that. I'm going to show people your books again. So here they are, you guys. Um, I'm sure you've got them there, right next to you as well. The magic of inclusion and the unexpected journey. Number three is on the way. I'm also going to share with you guys where you can grab Jules's books if you want um, to read them or give them to someone as a gift. So Jules has got a website called juliefisher.com.au. Very easy. It's normal spelling, <laughs> juliefisher.com.au. And on here, she's got the books tab. Um, and there they are. They've got the um, uh, there's Darcy. <laughs> I love that picture of him. Um, <laughs> you know, you can buy them there, and I'm sure if you buy them directly off this website, that Jules is going to sign them for you and send them send them through. And uh, of course, if you um, if you can't remember the website, you can just go and look them up on Amazon, um, and all your good online reseller stores will have them there as well. So, any final words of wisdom that you want to give either first-time authors or those people around uh, are in the message of diversity and inclusion or both okay so for first-time authors um the self-sabotage and the self-doubt will creep in but keep pushing don't don't let it stop you and we're always here for support and guidance don't forget that um your message needs to get out there um it will help somebody even if it helps one person it's done its job so just keep pushing set yourself some goals however it is you get through things do it that way and um yeah just my final word on you know please just be kind remember that everyone's a person first and give people a chance and watch them shine boom we don't have to say anything more guys <laughs> thank you jules for um an amazing insight into your world and into your books um I know you're going to be doing lots of amazing things to continue supporting this. And I'll be here by your side watching you as um, we continue to also uh, work together and, um, and grow and for you to write more books um, and keep smashing it out, as I like to say. Um, congratulations on everything you've done so far. I'm super proud of you. And, um, and I can't wait to see where we are. Maybe we'll reconvene for another interview in 12 months and give these guys an update of the changes that have occurred. Yeah. All right, guys, have an amazing week ahead and smash it out. Bye.